morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. And if you're watching this YouTube video, welcome to the Bitcoin Family Channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. A beautiful day again here in Phuket, Thailand. Today, I have four amazing Bitcoin charts, a trading tip, a travel tip, a beautiful life advice. Of course, also talking about some really cool news I read this morning. And yes, yes, I'm going to pay attention to the crash, the huge crash of Bitcoin to the price where we were around two or three days ago. But yes, we are around 42K again. Let's see what the charts have to say for now. Now, let's quickly jump into the charts first. Bam. This is the first chart, guys. This chart I posted somewhere in March 2023. At that moment, I tweeted, guys, give it another two years and 2021 will look like 2017 on the Bitcoin charts. And that is what I mean with zooming out. Look. At the moment that you stepped into Bitcoin in 2017, you thought, whoa, this is a massive bull run. If you zoom out now, after the bull market of 2021, 2017 looks like a very small hill. And now after the bull market of 2024, 25, 2021 now also will start to look at that small hill and 2017 will even almost disappear from the charts. That is how you zoom out in Bitcoin. But let's look at some very interesting charts at the moment because there is also a day chart that is showing you something very important is about to happen. Let's zoom in a little bit. This is the four hour chart guys. On the four hour chart, we can see exactly where the support was at Bitcoin. That support was around that 42,500 ish level. We are at the moment at 42,857 guys. It's a very beautiful level. If we look at the one hour chart, Let's zoom in a little bit. We can see this new buy opportunity is arising on the Bitcoin family indicator setup. We need to close the candle above that yellow stepping line. The positive part is that we are near that bottom of the Bollinger Band. So there is a lot of upward potential for this trade. If we now look at the other part of this indicator. We can see the blue line is already crossing that white line. That white line is a little bit too horizontal, it needs to start pointing upwards. We can see on the bottom that yellow and blue decreasing tremendously, even the start of the green dot. And we can see also that green line on top over there, guys. So this is almost a triple confirmation, almost quadruple confirmation of a trade to take on the one hour chart. If you want to take a trade, I would definitely trade it because there is an upward potential all the way up to that 45k level again. The top of that Bollinger Band is around 45,378. So if we take this trade, that could easily be a 2k dollar trade. So calculate your profits over there, guys. And now I'm going to zoom out a little bit to a one day chart that will show you that something very important is about to happen, which could make this trade even way more profitable if you are patient. Now let's quickly jump into the chart. This is that chart. This is the one day chart guys and we can see the MACD on the bottom and we can see now that blue line crossing that red line. This is what we call a golden cross on the MACD guys. And the last two times on the day chart we saw this MACD crossing the blue above that red line. The first time we had a 30% pump, the second time we had a 22% pump and this is now the third time in the last couple of months that we will see that cross again on the day chart which could lead to this pump of, let's say 20%. If we would pump 20% from the levels of 40K, that would mean we would go to that 48K level that we are all waiting for. If we would pump 30%, then it could, could even take us to 52K, also a level a lot of people are expecting. So this is a very interesting move that we see happening now on the charts. Yes, you can zoom into the five minute, into the one hour, into the 15 minute, into the 30 minute. If you zoom out to the day chart, we can see this beautiful cross happening. And that could be indeed now a perfect moment to open that trade on a shorter time frame, so one hour or four hour. And then if we would go up into this move, you will be taking a shitload of profit. So yes, that is why we always use the same system in the Bitcoin family signals group. Every time the same system, because we don't want to miss out on these beautiful moves. And sometimes it will lead to a little bit loss, but the last trade was a 12% profit. And if we are going to catch this beautiful trade, then it will be even a bigger profit, guys. Now, then we have this beautiful table over here, guys. It's showing you the differences of return of investment, annualized or cumulative, um, of all the assets out there. 
we can see on the left side, for example, Bitcoin, the US NASDAQ, we can see um, the US small caps, the mid caps, we can see gold, we can see bonds, preferred stocks, EM stocks, US, like all of the assets, the commodities, everything there on the left side, you can compare now all of the return investments that they had since 2011. If you look at the annualized return on investment, then Bitcoin is around 148.9%. The second one on the list is around 17%. That's almost 10 times less than Bitcoin. And then if you continue down the list, you will also somewhere find gold, for example. Gold is around 2.5%. So this is showing you how powerful investing in Bitcoin is. It is the best performing asset of all asset classes in the last decade. Please understand this. Pause this video now, look at these numbers, and then come back and comment down below that you don't think Bitcoin is the best performing asset. Numbers don't lie. And the beautiful part is that we can see that the bear market was 2022, just like it was in 2018, and just like it was in 2014, and we will get two green years now, 24 and 25. Amazing, beautiful table. Then we have the last chart, guys. This chart is just showing you how Bitcoin has been moving on a log scale in the last uh, couple of epochs, guys. Epoch one, two, three, and four. So these are the four-year cycles. We are now towards the end of that four-year cycle because we are nearing the halving in 2024. And after the halving, we will pump up and we will come down again in 2026. And then we will be in Epoch 5. And then in Epoch 5, we will start to talk again about the halving that's going to happen in 2028. Because four years later, after 2024, there will be another halving. And towards that halving in 2028, we will again be moving slowly upwards to that line, maybe then again around 100k. And then in 2028, 29, guys, we again will see this beautiful bull market. And after the beautiful bull market of 2028, 29, we will again in 2030 see a bear market and slowly start to work towards Epoch 6, the next halving in 2032. That is how predictable Bitcoin is, because we know when the halvings take place. We know when the demand will be the biggest. We also know when people will be too greedy and have too much euphoria and when the price will probably crash again. Because every cycle, whatever asset it is, all depends on human emotions. And that psychology of the human being is leading to these beautiful cycles combined with, of course, the halvings, combined with the growing demand and with the diminishing returns, everything else. This lock chart is really interesting because we are going to hit that 100K level line and we are also going to hit that $1 million per Bitcoin level line that you see here on the charts in the future, guys. Amazing charts again, guys. Yes, short term, also looking very bullish. Look at that one day chart, that golden cross in the MACD that we are seeing could lead to a 20 to 30 percent pump. Please realize that 20 to 30 percent of 40k, how much? Yes, 12k. Pumping all the way up to 50k is a possibility if we do what happened the last two times of these golden crosses on that MACD, guys. Just check the charts. TA shows you the way. Also beautiful when you zoomed out that you can still see Epoch 4 and 5. We could go to above 100k and even above $1 million per Bitcoin, all depending on the phase we will be in and the liquidity that will come into the market. And I believe that liquidity is going to be insane. When the spot ETFs will be approved, it's almost like 15 companies that are now applying for a spot ETF. If they all at the same time will be approved, there will be a lot of clients getting access to Bitcoin through the spot EDF, which means a lot of demand for Bitcoins. The demand will grow. What is the offer doing? The offer is decreasing because from April 2024, we will only see 3.125 Bitcoin created in each 10 minute block. So that means if you do the calculations, every day 450 Bitcoins will be created. Only 450 Bitcoins daily. 
for the next four years. This is not enough Bitcoins for all that demand that's going to be there because of the spot ETF, because of the retail, because of everything that's happening worldwide. Adoption of Bitcoin, presidents like in Argentina, Javier Millet, very Bitcoin positive. Countries adapting Bitcoin one by one. 450 Bitcoins per day is not enough to give to that market. So the only thing what can happen when the demand is insane and the offer is decreasing is that the price will go up, guys. That's how the market has been working all through history. Now, that were the charts. Let's jump into the trading tip. Bam. The trading tip for today, guys, is a tip about patience. Patience is one of the key factors you need to have when you are trading, guys. When you have patience, it allows the trader to make informed and rational like decisions. If you are acting out of FOMO in a hurry, that's not an informed, that's not a rational decision, that's just fear of missing out. You need to be patient. When you read the charts, when you see the market and you see that they are in line and that there is a buying opportunity at certain Fibonacci retracement levels, put your buy order there and be patient because the market will always do what it needs to do. That is why TA does exist. Patience is very important. And I know that a lot of people are commenting down below this video, Bitcoin is still gonna crash to 31K. If you really believe that Bitcoin is gonna crash to 31K, it doesn't matter what I have to say, but if you believe this, put your buy orders there and be patient. I need to be very honest. 31K is a massive support level, but 37 and 38K is also a massive support level. And 41 and 42K, also a very massive support level. I don't predict futures, I just put the buy orders at support levels and when we hit those support levels, I am very happy I bought that dip. That's why I tweeted three words, buy the dip. The support levels are there to support Bitcoin. That is why you should have your buy orders there. You should not stress about being able to buy Bitcoin at the cheapest possible price. You won't be able to every time call out that cheapest possible price and to buy it at that level. But you are able to put buy orders at all the support levels. And when we crash through those levels with a flash crash, with a wick, you maybe are lucky and you buy the Bitcoins at those price. Dollar cost averaging. Keep adding Bitcoins to your portfolio. Not just one time, not just two time, every time and again and again. When your salary comes in, when your savings come in, when the 13 month comes in, whatever money extra comes in, add Bitcoins to your portfolio. Simple as that. Let's jump into the travel tip. The travel tip for today, guys, is once in your lifetime with your family, please organize a camper trip. If it's a small camper or it's a big camper, it doesn't really matter. If you have a small camper and a lot of children, then please bring a tent. Yes, so you can also do jiggy jiggy without the kids are going like this in the camper van. But if you want to experience a beautiful adventure in Europe, within the beautiful Europe, then rent yourself a camper. You don't even need to own it or buy it. Rent yourself a camper, do a trip for three weeks. Portugal, complete West Coast, and then the south of Algarve, three, four weeks, beautiful trip where you can take that camper van, park it near the sea, watch the beautiful sunrise or the sunset. All so beautiful if you do this with a camper, guys. Yes, just very simple traveling. No luxury hotels, no luxury stuff, just a bag with some clothes, a beautiful camper, traveling from the most beautiful areas in Portugal, all unseated. It's an amazing trip. And you don't need to do only Portugal. We did it with the camper, we were through all Europe. Croatia, it is amazing. Bulgaria, it's very beautiful. Italy, it's amazing. Uh, Switzerland, Austria, all of these countries we did with a camper. And I think that's one of the most beautiful times we had as a family. Of course, when the kids grow up, they need privacy and a camper is not the best, perfect place. But still, a trip for two, three weeks with a camper through different beautiful areas of Europe is an amazing travel tip, guys. I would always recommend to do this once in your lifetime. Rent yourself a camper, 
make a three week trip, beautiful through different countries, and you will really understand how it feels to be completely free and park wherever you want and stay wherever you want and eat wherever you want and just breathe the air, the fresh air of the mountains if you want, guys. It's amazing. So the travel tip for today, go online, search camper rental for this summer, and this summer plan yourself a beautiful, adventurous camper trip. Bam. Today I'm going to uh, combine two categories, the question of one of the followers and the news because both of them are about the spot ETF. The question was, Didi, if the spot ETF will be approved on the 10th of January, are all your charts that you're sharing every time still valid? Of course they are still valid. Every four year cycle, guys, there was crazy ass cool news, there was crazy terrible news and Bitcoin just kept moving like it has always been moving. Bitcoin doesn't depend only on news. That's only a small part of the Bitcoin price. The Bitcoin price is moving up because of demand and offer and because of all the halvings happening every four year cycle. That's what is pushing the Bitcoin price up. How do you think we got here or last time at 70K all the way from zero in those first three halving periods? Not only because of the news because of the demand. People start to understand the power of Bitcoin and that it's increasing their purchasing power instead of decreasing their purchasing power like dollars and euros. So people prefer to have Bitcoins than dollars and euros, which leads to demand. And now that that demand is also going to institutions because of the approval of the spot ETF, yes, that means there is the possibility we get a little bit more liquidity into the market. That's not like 100% sure yet. So even when those spot ETFs will be approved on the 10th, these, all these charts, all these models are already pre-calculating a lot of these things that you now think that is news. If you look at the Plan B stock to flow model, that is already pre-calculating all the growth of demand. That's pre-calculating all the growth of liquidity into the market. That is why it's called the stock to flow model. That's why it was used also in the gold markets in the old days. This is already calculating all that new liquidity coming into the market, the demand growing, the adoption growing, all that stuff combined. That is why these stock to flow models were created. Because that model understands that there is a halving so there will be less Bitcoin cravings every day. The demand is growing, so we can do the calculations. That is where we should somewhere um, reach in the next Bitcoin bull run, above 100K, most of these models are seeing. So that's why I tweeted, spot ETF yes or spot ETF no, it doesn't really matter. Bitcoin price will keep moving up, guys. All the way up to 2025 and 2026 will be the bear market again. And for all those people that still think that the news is leading, of course not. Most of these news companies, they understand this cycle by now. They understand, ah, these two years we can be very bullish news, put out bullish news because Bitcoin is going up. And then in the bear market, hey, oh shit, yeah, 2026, we should already start to focus on uh, some uh, bearish news because yeah, we will go down. It's simple as that. TA is showing us the way, it is not the news, guys. I truly believe that. I am very positive about the spot ETF, if that will be approved, that it will lead to a massive push in Bitcoin and liquidity. It's not like a very big coincidence that they are postponing the approval of the spot ETF exactly near that moment that we see the halving in Bitcoin, near that moment that we have always seen a push in the Bitcoin price. There was no spot ETF approval in 2020. Bam, we pushed up. There was no spot ETF in 2016 around the halving, but still, bam, the Bitcoin price pushed up. So it's not that spot ETF news. That's the news that they want retail investors to believe that that will push the Bitcoin price. There is us as the Bitcoin community that have been collectively pushing adoption in Bitcoin for the last 10 years and that has created a beautiful bull run every time and again and again and, and then at the top when the euphoria kicks in and then when people start to take profit and then more people start to take profit that is when we crash again to these new bottoms and I believe that new bear market bottom in 2026 will be above 30k so congratulations if you ever bought Bitcoin below 30k because I don't see a possibility anymore if we have a normal bull market cycle in the far future that we go in the bear market below 30k. You bought the bottom beautifully. Now let's jump into the next part of the video. 
the next part of the video of guys is the inspirational part the life lesson and the life lesson for today is um, about weaknesses because a lot of people always talk about what their strength is and what their weaknesses are so for me it's very simple a weakness is a strength in the wrong environment that's how i see it of course we all have our weaknesses but if you move from one environment to the other environment that weakness could be a strength in some situations what you think might be a weakness is the ultimate strength that you need to solve that situation and also sometimes the other way around in some situations you believe that this is your strength but in that situation that strength is a weakness just think about it it's just one big mindfuck this is my strength this is my weakness but it all depends about the environment where you are sometimes yes it would be accepted as a strength but often also it would be accepted as a weakness. And it's still the same strength or weakness that you think that you have. But it's about the environment that you adapt to if that strength or weakness is still seen as a strength or weakness. That's how simple it is. So never define yourself because of certain strengths or certain weaknesses, because they all don't matter. You are you. In every different environment, there is a different strength and a different weakness needed and you adapt to that environment and try to use the optimal part of that strength in that environment or the optimal weakness in that environment. That's how simple it is. You just do your ultimate best in every different environment. And nobody is there to determine if that is a strength or a weakness because they don't know shit. Nobody knows shit. We are just this small. You know that I always say you zoom out in Bitcoin, you look at the bigger picture. Try to visualize this. Look at yourself standing here, or look at me now standing here in the garden, and now zoom out. You know, if I look to the bottom now, I see these ants, tiny, tiny little ants. If somebody looks from the top to me, I look like a tiny, tiny ant. And if you zoom out more from the next planet, then Earth is almost nothing. And if you zoom out to the next Milky Way, whatever, then Earth is even disappearing, guys. We are this small, so we must not worry about what is our strength, what is our weakness. We just must do our ultimate best in every different environment and situation. And then sometimes what we didn't think that would be a strength will be the best strength usable at that location and time. So just look at everything what you do and I am just doing my ultimate best. If it's a strength or a weakness, it doesn't matter because it all depends on the situation. But I'm doing my best to solve a certain thing in a positive way. I think that is how you need to look at every step in life. Not this is a strength, not this is a weakness. No, this is me doing my best to provide my family of the best livable situation out there in Thailand. And here in Thailand, the strength of a house would, for example, be making sure that there is a lot of air conditioning. If I would move now to Iceland, I don't think that my strength over there would be providing my family of an air conditioning. Probably there I need to focus more on a beautiful heating system, you know? Just a simple example, but that's how it, what I mean with, yeah, sometimes an air conditioning can seem like a beautiful positive strength in a country, but in another country you don't need that thing. And maybe you think, ah, oh, that's a very stupid example. I hope that you think that because that will lead you to you now commenting down below. Tell me which strength of yours is a weakness in a different situation. And which weakness of yours maybe could be a strength in a different situation. I would love to see a few examples of the followers down below in the comments. Just I want to see that you really are listening to these videos. I really want to interact with me and leave a comment down below these videos about situations. Because if you now try to imagine those situations because you want to comment them down below, it makes you think indeed about what I just said. And when you start to think about what I just said, you start to understand also probably what I just said. And then you will start to see, oh shit, it is true. I thought I could use my strength in that certain situation, but it appeared to be a weakness. And when you see that, and when it clicks for the first time, then you will understand, ah shit, I should adapt to every situation and just see it as doing my ultimate best to provide the perfect solution or perfect situation for my family, for myself, in every different environment. Simple as that. 
that was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about all the news? What do you think about all the other information? Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam.